Hello, welcome to another video in this channel, which is finally again about some photography. So this year I haven't been out taking photos a lot, which is quite unfortunate, but still next week at least I have like three days, which I'm going to use to head into the Alps, try to do some mountain photography. And in this video I want to share a bit how I plan this trip, also how the scouting works, both the virtual scouting and also then hopefully up on the mountain I'm going to yeah, record some video and eventually hopefully also show you some photos. But first of all, this video now, this first part of the video, I want to focus on two apps I use for virtual scouting and also planning the routes I want to take up and down the mountains. But there are the other tools I use and to avoid too much redundancy, I'm gonna leave a link to a video I did about my process of planning night photos in which I show how I use Planet, Photopulse and those apps are basically very essential to my planning also when I head into the mountains. So I also would check those, but I just encourage you to check out this video if you want to know how I, for example, plan a night shoot or also a sunset or sunrise shoot because with those apps I can get a very good impression of where the sun will be relative to my subject. And yeah, just check out that video, link will be in the description. And now, as I said, I want to focus on some of the virtual scouting I do for mountain photography. So let's not waste much more time and just begin with the scouting. So when I'm planning a trip into the mountains, into the Alps, then the first thing is usually I decide upon a region which I want to visit. And yeah, this time I want to go to the Tannheimer Tal again, or Tannheimer Valley, to which I've been already a few times in the past. It's like a three hour drive from where I live, so it's still okay. If I would, for example, want to go to the Dolomites, then it's more like a six hour drive. So I always have to decide how much time I want to spend on the road if I'm alone. So this is always a good compromise because the mountains are pretty nice, the area with the green slopes, and there are some pretty nice views. And also it's, although very accessible, in my opinion, not photographed to death yet. So there are still some views where you can be a bit creative, I think. So last time I was there, I was up on the Bremtjoch. I also was on the Agenstein already in the past. I went all around this side here of the Fielsalp Lake. So been to all those mountains, been down here, but I haven't been to this side of the mountain. So the Geishorn, Rauhorn, Kugelhorn, Schrecksee, all around this side. I haven't yet explored so I want to head up there this time. And by the way this map you see here that's auto active. I have an account there so for one year you pay like $40. You can use it to plan your hiking trips which is pretty nice because then you already know the elevation. There's a pretty good net of trails they have also for around the world and you can save those maps on your cell phone offline so you can navigate just with GPS so you don't need internet. So this is not an ad, uh, it's just the app I use, want to share it. And what I already did using it, so you see there are already some trails or some routes here in the network created by others. And if you click on those, you get some details. They tell you how difficult it was and you can dig in and figure out if a hike is good enough or accessible enough to get up there for, like I usually do sunset, sunrise. So there's usually some hiking in the dark involved. And for this, I have to do some research and make sure that it's safe enough to hike such a trail in the dark because I don't want to stumble over some rocks or yeah, get lost in the mountains. The research I usually start here, but since those routes are created by other people, it's always their perspective. So in addition, I'll also research those mountains, those routes and check the official rating. So typical for hiking in the mountains, there's some scale, some rating going from T1 to I think T5 or T6. So T1 is pretty easy. T2, same. For T3, I think those are also sometimes marked red. You might sometimes need your hands, but it's also pretty manageable from my experience. So it's something you can do with a big backpack when you want to take photos. When it comes to T4, I usually like to check this out during day and ideally maybe not directly with a big backpack. If I'm under time pressure, I have to get there for sunset. If it's a T4, I usually try to avoid it. So I already checked and the route up to the Geishorn 
from this side here of the leg is pretty easy. And I'll now show you how I plan the route. So there's the route planner here. You can get an idea how far it is and how steep it is. Just set some waypoints here, going up here and then to the top. Then you see like, okay, it's six kilometers elevation gain, a little more than 3000 feet, pretty doable. So from my experience, I'd say I need like two, two and a half hours for that. If it's very hot, I might go a little slower, but I want to go up there in the afternoon on the first day to photograph sunset. Sunsets in this direction, that's a pretty high mountain. So I'd estimate around four or five o'clock, I'll walk in the shade. So should be pretty okay. But usually I plan in a little bit more because sometimes it also depends how fit you feel on the day. So let's just say I plan in three hours. Now that I researched this route and planned it here, I'd save it and then also sync it to my cell phone. Important thing, what I also did and what I want to show you now, I wanted to see if there's even a view up on the Geishorn. Because I haven't been up there, I also did a quick Google for images taken from there. I didn't find so much, just some, yeah, mostly cell phone shots, which give you a rough idea. But what you can always do is you can use Google Earth. And you see, I'm already here in the region. This is the Fielsabsee and here's the Geishorn. And this is just the web version. So if you want to really geek out on it, install the full version because then you can also simulate the light, which is pretty nice. You see where the shadows are. But here I'll just want to see the general view and you can just fly in here to the top of the Geishorn mountain. You also see it's a pretty rocky top, which is good because those rocks can provide some foreground interest. I don't yet know, so we'll see when we're up the mountain, but still. Now let's look into the different directions. So uh, sunset is in this direction, but the view in this direction, the mountains there are not so spectacular and there's a, a drop off down the valley. So I'm not sure if this is so interesting. I mean, I always have to look when I'm up on the mountain, it always looks a bit different, especially then with the light and weather conditions. So if I look down here into the southern direction, we have here the Rauhorn mountain, there we have the Hochvogel. So the mountain panorama here looks much more interesting. And I think this is a pretty good view. And yeah, just using Google Earth, you can already compose your shot a bit. So you could try to, okay, do I want those on one line or a little next to each other, which might look good. And also you see there's a ridge going in this direction which might look nice going there and then zigzagging back up here and pointing to the highest mountain there in the background. So this would be nice. Um, light coming from this side, so the ridge here and also the higher tops of those mountains will get light late, but this side of the mountain will be in shade. So I have to see if this will work. What I can always do, I can try to get a little more, yeah, a little lower and this also depends on if I find a good foreground, so some rocks maybe here in the foreground, then this leading line to the side. And yeah, I think this could work. And yeah, it's something to test. I also checked the other mountains. So this one here, the Rauhorn, but the hike up there is a bit too difficult to do or the hike down later in the dark, from my opinion, I think going up from this side would work, but it's nothing I want to do in a rush in the evening. I mean, I had a long drive and yeah, from what I read, getting up the guys on from this side, pretty easy. Also, there are some other hills this year called the Kugelhorn, where you have a very nice view here. What's the Shreksee? So this is a view I'll most likely do on the second evening. So I hopefully also will have a photo to show you from there. And yeah, then I also, aside from getting up those two mountains, We'll do some further hiking, just some exploring. But yeah, those are the two essential apps I use to plan my trips into the Alps or on the mountains. So Auto Active, getting an idea what possible trails there are and also trying to figure out how steep they are. Read through the comments of people who created some routes and figure out if they found it difficult or less difficult. But always, I also check the official ratings for the routes. What you can also always do 
Google for the tops of those mountains and see if there are some views. Sometimes if you find some hiking journals for those, they include photos. But yeah, for me, I think this is already enough. And it's also enough talk now about the planning. I'm now excited to head into the mountains finally and yeah, do some hiking and some photography. So see you on top of the Geishorn. So I'm now up on the mountain and wow, what a view it is. So the scouting or the virtual scouting paid off, I think, because just look around, views in every direction. And now it's time to really see if the compositions I virtually scouted would really work. So I'm here an hour before sunset, so I have time. Also, I didn't film anything of the way up here, no B-roll, didn't want to bore you with it. I have a few photos showing the way. Let's just say it was quite a slog, but really worth it. So the view which I had scouted with Google Earth is basically in this direction. So where you have all those layered or layers of mountains and this big one here in the foreground, kind of a leading line. Now I just have to see if I can somehow find a foreground, which I can use to kind of lead around to this mountain. So here we have some rocks, some greenery, and yeah, I might just try to find something here to yeah, lead the viewer into the scene. Or I go farther in this direction and just leave out the foreground completely. Another option is I brought the long lens, which is always a good idea because with all those mountains there, it's gonna look nice if I just zoom in. Also, there are no clouds, so clear skies. And that's always good when you have the long lens, then you can just focus on the landscape, on the mountains, and yeah, you don't need to include much sky. But also, if you do such virtual scouting and also you find images of a place, don't get too attached to uh, the result of the scouting. Also look around because what I actually found and I want to show you is a view which I like even more. It might not be as spectacular in terms of the mountains you see at the horizon, but in terms of the composition and different layers, I think this one might even be my favorite. So let's just look at this here. So we have nice rocks here in the foreground, which nicely lead into the scene. Then we have different layers of mountains descending into the distance and then kind of a flat horizon, which, yeah, I wouldn't include too much sky there either. So I would point the camera downward, but I think this is gonna be a nice photo, especially because of all the green slopes down there. So it's really beautiful scene. So it's really worth arriving early and having a look around because there's usually, or not usually, but often some other view, which might even be better than the one you pre-visualized or wanted to photograph. So yeah, I now have to decide a bit. So with the sun going down, I think I'll soon start shooting this scene because it works nicely with the side light. And then later when the sun set, I'm gonna try this one, which doesn't work now with the hard shadows on this side. It would actually be a nice scene for sunrise with the sun coming up in that direction. And you have the first light of the sun touching the peaks there. So I'm here two more days, so maybe I head up there, or I head up here again for sunrise, but we'll see. Now I'm gonna focus on this shoot. I'm not sure if I film anything more. The next step would be I show you the photos and talk you through it, or I talk you through a composition once I've set up. So we'll see. But now I'm gonna have to rest a bit and yeah, regain some strength because also I have to get down there later in the dark. So yeah. It's quite some work today. Okay, so since I have so much time, let's talk you through the composition. As I said, now with the sun still illuminating those slopes down there, I wanted to start with this composition and yeah, gonna record now what I have here, what I see on the camera and try to talk you a bit through my setup. Let's see. I have to actually 
yeah it's 16 by 9 so it's a little more cut off than the actual photo but yeah i don't want to change the aspect ratio now because i've already honed in on the composition so please forgive me for that but yeah let me just now record this and show you what i got so as i said here in the foreground we have those rocks and i made sure that those are separated and nicely yeah, sloping into the scene so we have a nice curve going on here leading into the scene i also like the shadows pointing in that direction and then we have here a bright spot so those slopes down there which nicely yeah catches the viewer and then we have this relatively dark area which i'm gonna have to do some yeah, brightening some lifting of the shadows otherwise that's just too dark but there's actually a lot of detail so i'm gonna yeah show this in the final photo so we kind of move over here where we also have nicely lit those slopes and then we have more layers of mountains descending into the distance so i really like this also even without clouds in the distance i think this is going to work even when the sun has set so maybe i gonna have to move around quickly later getting filled in this direction then getting back here getting another one without the sun so just with the afterglow and then i'm gonna have to quickly move down the mountain but yeah so that's the first composition in terms of shooting this um, i'm gonna do bracketing two exposures for background just to make sure i have enough dynamic range because some of the rocks and slopes there get pretty bright if i want to expose for the dark areas so just make sure bracketing is active and then also i do a focus stack although it's not needed so i'm not very close to the foreground but yeah better safe than sorry so i'm just gonna take a foreground photo and one focused to the mountains there in the middle ground and yeah if i don't need all of them i'm gonna delete them later it's always a good idea take a few more photos while in the field especially if you have to hike up such a mountain so you don't want to miss any yeah raw material later for your editing okay enough talk now gonna wait around a bit take a few photos and then gonna head to the other side and see what i'm gonna photograph there so i'm a little bit annoyed by the limitations of my lens here it's just 200 millimeters and for those mountains in the background there i'd need at least three or four hundred and yeah i think i finally have to invest in a longer lens but if you see there i'm not sure on the wide scene if you see it there's a lot of haze there where the sun is currently setting and there are many nice layers of mountains and with the haze there's a nice sense of depth so it's just blue different shades of blue with the layers i think there's one two three four five or six layers of mountains and it just looks fantastic but i can't zoom in enough so i'm gonna shoot the scene and then crop in a bit so i'll end up with maybe 20 or 25 megapixels it's still okay but i'd really love to zoom in so if you're in the mountains if you climb on top of some mountain you have a long lens then usually all around you find composition or compositions as the sun sets and light changes and yeah it's really worth bringing a long lens and those oh this here the 70 to 200 yeah i feel quite often it's not long enough so we'll see maybe gonna invest in some new ones soon but for now just still gonna take those photos because it just looks too nice to miss out so i'm gonna use gigapixel ai or something to yeah zoom in a bit if need be but for now yeah i'm gonna show you this photo also because it just looks fantastic with those layers and then i'm gonna see what happens in this direction so it's finally time to photograph into the direction which i virtually scouted with google earth so i now also found a nice leading line for the foreground with those rocks here so now with the last light illuminating those it's a nice line here going into the scene and then picking up there you see the ridge is also still illuminated leading all the way down there or over there to the mountain in the middle and then in the background we have the hochvogel mountain so this one will also catch the light very late and yeah now gonna take this photo 
maybe experiment a bit also maybe including this mountain there but currently it's not working because the sun is too harsh it would be just at the side of the frame so it doesn't look too good not very balanced so keep it out and rather focus here on those mountains and this leading line yeah guiding the view under the sea